Hello and welcome and welcome to Aid Now Witness. I've been documenting the changing urban scene in words and in photos since 1996, first on film, then on digital. This was my first digital camera, the Nikon Coolpix 990. I got it in 2000. I've built up quite a large photo archive and in this video I have some then and now scenes. I'm interested in everything you can see when you're out and about in the city. The architecture, construction, uh, street scenes, public transport and now planes because the new Manchester can be seen from high up in the sky including from transatlantic flights. This video is number 25 in my Building Boom playlist and focuses on scenes along the river in Salford and in Manchester. This is the River Irwell at the historic heart of the city as featured in my Green Gate Building Boom video. But first, a location quiz. Where is this? Here's a clue. It's not far from Strangeways Prison, HMP Manchester. This forgotten area is very green with remnants of old industry. This is the River Irwell flowing through Salford. That footbridge is 730 metres or 800 yards northwest of Manchester Cathedral as the crow flies. We are looking exactly due west, upstream along the river. Study the view carefully as I think it's going to change in years to come. OK, let's cycle back along the footpath to our starting point. Those are the Green Gate skyscrapers, so we're nearly back in the centre. Around here is where the ancient settlements of Manchester and Salford originated, on either side of the River Irwell. Here's a piece of medieval Manchester, Cheatham's Library and the Baronial Hall, an architectural gem from the 14th century, and next to it, a modern architectural masterpiece, the Stoller Hall, a concert hall attached to Cheatham School of Music. It opened its doors in 2007. This is the view from Cathedral Approach, looking over Victoria Bridge and Blackfriars Bridge. Manchester Cathedral looks magnificent in the sunshine, and here's the view from Victoria Bridge with the demolished Premier House on the left. Blackfriars Bridge, with its distinctive ionic columns, was built in 1820. And now, looking back from Blackfriars Bridge towards the cathedral, we see a medley of mostly modern structures. The cathedral is still the central focus. That ornate brick building is interesting. It's called Dial House and was built in the 1930s. It's still a telephone exchange. Looking west from Blackfriars Bridge, downstream, mostly taller new buildings form a canyon with the River Irwell flowing in between. Straight ahead is the Trinity Footbridge and beyond it, mostly new buildings. Just on the right is The Edge, completed in 2004. By the way, that plane is Air Canada, London Heathrow to Toronto. The Edge is a pair of residential buildings containing a wide range of apartments. Many have balconies and there are great views. This is Parsonage Gardens and Century Buildings, which back onto the river. In the late 1990s, I saw it being converted from offices to apartments with a new extension. And in 2020, it was proposed to demolish that historic building on the right to make way for a new tower named One North Parade, designed by Simpson Hall. Three years later, the old building is still there. We are looking from behind Century Buildings, with Blackfriars Bridge on the right, the Cathedral, the Edge, Chapel Wharf Apartments, Dudeson House, the Lowry Hotel, Riverside Apartments and Riverview Tower. I love the reflections of the modern buildings in the water, forming animated abstract patterns. Back on the Manchester side, on the street named St Mary's Parsonage, a mixture of Victorian commercial buildings and a faceless 1970s style office building, Alberton House soon to be replaced by the Alberton. The sign says, the end of tedium is coming soon. A modern reimagination of Manchester's Victorian cotton mills with world-leading amenity within its walls, including a rooftop holistic wellness center, a rooftop pool, panoramic rooftop terrace, gym space, and cycle store. Riverside apartments and Riverview Tower look stunning in the bright sunshine. This is Trinity Bridge, designed by Santiago Calatrava. Construction finished in 1995, but I believe it didn't open until later. The Lowry Hotel opened in 2001. It's a five-star hotel and very plush inside. We can look along the walkways back towards the cathedral in the northeast, and also looking southwest towards Albert Bridge, completed in 1844. 
The Calatrava Bridge is a graceful and magnificent structure, recalling the ships that once used to dock here. Manchester has a sailing ship in its coat of arms. Ships came to Manchester via the Mersey and Irwell navigation. What was once a dockside area is now a great place to walk your dog. In the middle of Albert Bridge, this plaque recalls the tragedy of the Emma, launched in 1828. Do a search for it online. Albert Bridge House was built in the 1950s for the Inland Revenue. The proposal by Oval is to demolish it. Link in the description. I love that 1950s style font, also used by Granada TV. Also noteworthy, the Civil Justice Centre, which I photographed extensively during its construction. It was completed in 2007. Next to it is the former Pump House, now the museum of the same name. And here's one of the most distinctive new buildings to appear, New Bailey 4, with its strong latticework design recalling old railway bridges. The bits of yellow on the black exterior look fantastic. That's the colour of the Manchester Bee, so I think those white sections should be painted yellow, and here I've done it in Photoshop just to see how it looks. The sign says, Welcome to New Bailey. It comprises a number of interesting modern buildings. New Bailey 3 recalls textiles and weaving. Here are the 11 parts of the development and its four major buildings. This is the Princess Catherine, operated by Manchester River Cruises, with passengers disembarking. Left bank apartments date from 2006. What's the reason for the scaffolding under the bridge section, which contains apartments? The Princess Catherine turns round in front of Albert Bridge, ready to make her way back towards Salford Quays. It's a great tour, highly recommended. This is the Grade 2 listed Irwell Street Bridge, built in 1877. The design echoes the swing bridges over the ship canal further down the water. On the Manchester side is the Manchester coat of arms with the sailing ship. On the Salford side, the old Salford coat of arms with the three sheaves of corn. And bees, a unifying symbol on both sides of the Irwell and beyond. Welcome, you are now in Salford, says the sign. Behind it is Riverside House. The old house was mirrored with a roughly matching new section. A few steps away from the river on the Salford side is this eye-catching construction site. The building is named Eden and it's said to be one of the most environmentally friendly office buildings in the UK with its greenery on the exterior, completing May 2023. Next to it is the car park with a distinctive exterior that reminds me of a communist era department store in Dresden. New Bailey is built where the prison of the same name once stood. And here's the site of Left Bank Apartments, once St. John's College. And then Left Bank under construction. These photos from my photo archive. Looking southwest, we can see the newest bridge over the river. It's the Ordsil Cord Railway Bridge. We'll take a closer look at that later. From in front of the Victorian Albert Hotel by the river, we can see the futuristic new apartment buildings that have appeared on formerly derelict land along the river. Novella, available to move in now, says the sign. On the former Granada TV site, Factory International is proceeding. Let's just take a moment to see the transformation around here. This low-rise Art Deco building was next to Granada. Now it's disappeared without trace. From the Salford side, we can see the Victorian Albert Hotel and those two residential towers on the Granada site, next door to Factory International with its weirdly designed main building, which looks like a screaming face in an abstract painting. It's a project of superlatives, including the price, £211 million, source BBC News. There's an opening in the fence allowing us to enter the new pedestrianised area on the Salford side. The inscription states, Princess Bridge replaced the previous structure in 2017. It was part of the Audsell Cord project by Network Rail, and above it is the new rail bridge. The only scheduled train at the moment is the hourly Transpennine Express to and from Manchester Airport. George Stevenson's magnificent Grade 1 listed 1830 bridge is now revealed, following the removal of the old bridge. This new rail link is controversial because it cut off the Museum of Transport's link to the railway network. Now we've reached the site of one of the biggest construction projects in Manchester and Salford, Trinity Islands, next to the Irwell on two sites with the Inner Relief Road in between. They're designed by Simpson Hall. 
Construction hasn't yet started on the north site. Just on the left, one of Transport for Wales' superb new trains heading towards Oxford Road in Piccadilly, followed by an equally impressive Trans Pennine Express heading in the same direction. Here is the south construction site of Trinity Islands, still in its very early stages. On the river, working from a boat, workers are pruning back the vegetation and weeds growing along the riverside. It's as if nature is trying to reclaim the former industrial land, but humans are reclaiming it back. Those brick apartments appeared a few years ago and will soon be joined by Trinity Islands. I'm going to take a series of photographs from this viewpoint, which I've marked with two guidelines on top of the wall. That's the City of Manchester boundary sign with the iconic M designed by Peter Saville. Let's use our imagination as we visualize the Trinity Islands towers rising up into the sky. Regent Road Bridge is the busiest city centre crossing point over the Irwell, carrying the A57 between the M602 motorway and the Mancunian Way A57M. Now we've reached the southern end of the river, which is also being developed with lots and lots of new waterside residential apartments. And just passing by again, the Princess Catherine, on her way back to Salford Quays. We've nearly reached the end of the River Irwell. Beyond the footbridge on the right, the Manchester Ship Canal officially takes over. Up till a few years ago, this was a downbeat, forgotten post-industrial area. We have waited many decades for the present wave of renewal to arrive. And as we look towards the future, we must also never forget the past. We must always be aware of where we came from and how we got here. And that's why I will continue to document the slow transformation of Manchester as well as Liverpool and connected cities. I also waited a long time for some sunny clear weather, so I hope you found the video visually appealing as well as informative. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, tell others about it and please leave a comment. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Salford und in Manchester.